Three years ago, a young man from the Northern Cheyenne tribe was found dead here at Crazy Head Springs, just outside of Lame Deer, Montana. His name was Kaimani Littlebird. I interviewed his family just a few weeks after his death while making a documentary on Montana's crisis of missing and murdered indigenous persons. The full documentary, along with Kaimani's story, can be viewed by clicking the links on screen. Three years later, the family is still seeking answers and justice for Kaimani. Come get me. <laughs> Just, um, I haven't heard anything back from the um, BIA or anything. The only thing we was told that it was still open investigation. But um, they just told us that there is a new investigator in there and they're looking into it. They're looking over things that we always mention as a family, you know. Like they didn't have um, they didn't have the um, area taped off. They didn't take pictures of his body. You know, um, he, he was bruised from the um, waist on up. He had uh, marks around his neck. Those things were never brought out publicly. But those are things that we've all seen as a family that all showed up there that morning. Um, I honestly think that they feel like they messed up. And they feel like they let these things slip away. This time in 2020, when coronavirus hit, our reservation issued a state of emergency to where we had the stay-at-home orders and curfew in place. This, our particular case, could have been prevented if the BIA had followed the the protocol for the stay-at-home orders. They said they had um, back road security. They said they had security teams. So when the pandemic first started, we had people's camp, which then was society, the society camp. Kaimani joined the people's camp with his father. As members, they assisted in breaking up illegal parties taking place during COVID. Kaimani's body was found at one of these back road party sites. I thought that I'll, I'll I pretty much thought that if anything went wrong, that they was going to be there to help us. And man, they, they weren't, man. And for our tribal leaders to issue an executive order and for them not to honor the executive order along with the BIA, it kind of hurts my heart that they don't honor my son or um, push for his justice as hard as I thought they would. And, and if back road security was out there, like they said, because they were getting paid X amount of dollars to be securing these back roads. If they were out there doing what they were supposed to be doing, there wouldn't have been anybody out there. They knew that these were the party spots. They knew that these things were happening. A lot of these things could have been prevented. Today, our reservation is, t is named one of the most dangerous reservations. Recently, we had two murders in, in broad daylight. You know, people were just getting shot in in broad daylight and they're not doing nothing about it and i kept telling everybody when they get rid of um they're gonna get rid of everybody that was involved in kamani's case all these cops and nothing's ever gonna happen and um that's basically what happened they got rid of everybody and um through this three years time there wasn't no we haven't got nothing we haven't got no update from the bia we haven't got no um we haven't got anything from the um, tribal council, any type of acknowledgement or memorial or honoring, you know. And I was all like, that's because they brought these new people in. And we, I, I felt like we were letting it slip away. And um, it's kind of hard to say if they're really going to do something about it or not, you know. Because they don't understand, you know, by treating our people with, you know, just to open, shut cases by saying oh it's suicide oh it's hypothermia oh it's exposure you know those aren't it's not fair to us because that's an open and closed case for them if he did do what they said he did then why was he so beat up why was he so bruised you know those are the things that kind of haunt me i guess you can say and that's less paperwork for them and i was told this by an, an ex-investigator he said that's the simplest part of it he said our people inside of these um, uh, police officers' positions, investigators' positions, don't like the paperwork. He goes, when these cases come in, our workload is stacked, stacked, stacked. And I said, but that's not our fault, you know? That's not our fault that you can't do your paperwork. You know, you it's not our fault, but it's your job. If you can't do your job, then we need somebody that's going to go in and do the job, that actually has the passion for it. 
we need more people that have that that fire behind them to find actually investigate and get the information that is needed people always tell me i gotta move on and when you're, when, when you're going through something i'm going through and kind of been through the life i've been through it's kind of hard to move on the montana indian coalition had um they did a thing where they were testifying asking families to um, do their testimonies and for my family since i've been the representative from the beginning i was the first person out of our family that they asked to do their testimony and i agreed upon it and then i talked to kaimani's mom and i was like hey you know i think it's okay now to um go ahead and bring ernie in because in the beginning um, my brother was really frustrated because he he felt like we weren't including him we wanted to make everything um, more. We wanted to be more powerful and not so aggressive. And his anger was was really it was there, and there was nothing we could do in our power to change his anger because we didn't know how to comfort him, and that was his outlet. I was pretty riled up and radical last time. Yeah. You know, I wanted uh, I wanted revenge. I wanted justice. I wanted all that. You know, what kind of parent doesn't? And so I talked to the committee at the movement, or at the uh, testimonies, and I said, I have my brother. I said, it's going to be your guys' call. I said, um, I feel he's ready to come in and do this. What, what made you feel that he was ready to speak? Because ever since my brother became a grandfather, my brother has changed. I think that when Kyra was born, it kind of... Um, filled that void that was there, that emptiness, and all the hurt and everything he had, it covered it up, you know, and brought him back to who he was. I just think about my kids. No one will be here for my kids if, if I did anything. I wouldn't, my kids wouldn't be, uh, we travel around and play basketball, and I take a lot of unfortunate kids with me. When we go to these basketball tournaments, most of the kids on my team come from hard homes. When I see them out there winning, when I see them out there doing good, they're succeeding. And that's what makes me just want to continue suffering the way I'm suffering in a good way. Because it hurts every day, huh? It's like I wanted to give up. I was missing my son and I just wanted to give up. Like a month ago, I was like, man, this is really worth it, you know? I gotta go in the community and look at these people. And I think I was all thinking at the time, right now is the time I can be a Cheyenne warrior and go retaliate. But I gotta be a real Cheyenne warrior, you know? I gotta focus on my kids. And I used to say it at the camp all the time, you gotta do what's, uh, do what's right, not what's easy. And uh, the right thing to do is to refrain from that kind of, that kind of thought, you know? I battle with it every day, bro. I battle with it every day. Heart hurts every day. For me, myself, I just want his story to be told, and I just, um, I, I know that there was some that something happened to him out there. It was kind of healing to me that way I could share with the people in my community what we saw. I felt like I touched some of them, you know. Some of them um, had a while I was talking. I watched. Um, the criminal investigator now, I watched him just get up and walk out, you know, and I watched a couple of council people that were on the council at the time, they just got up and walked out. You know, I don't know what that was about, but I have a feeling that they heard what I was saying and they know that what I was saying was pretty much right. The Northern Shine people used Kaimani, Lonnie Flatness, and Christy Woodenthai as their gear to actually file a lawsuit against BIA. When they finally filed, those were the three names that they used. This is the reason why, because of these accidents. Christy Wudenthai is, is one who was beat, beat to death by her partner, and he got off scot-free. Bonnie Flatlist was home, a home invasion because of the, you know, other executive orders. People were going crazy. But he, they went into his home and they beat him to death. The council members who filed it then are no longer the same council members on the council now. The president who filed it then is no longer um, the president. Since then, we've been through two different presidents. 
um, since then we've been through a whole different council. So now we have it's a whole different ball game. A new uh, lady chairman, a new whole council that came in, and th some of them they know what you know a little bit of what's going on of back then, but they um with my understanding with them they still are pursuing it they're still pushing it i just pray on it every day and i, I know in the long run when the timing is right when the timing is right then something is going to be brought up you know, i just got to stay on uh, i just got to stay the course and i got to continue to do what's right for my kids and just uh if i would have retaliated or did anything by now then i wouldn't even be here today i feel that like I've told Ernie and I told my mom, um, I said I, in the past I was I tell them I keep their their spirits and say it's gonna happen. You know, just have faith, just keep praying. You know, somebody's gonna break, and it's been a few years, but in my heart and my own feelings, I know it's coming. It's coming close. It may not be the justice that we want, but it's gonna be. You know, someone's gonna break and they're gonna come and say yes. This is what really happened. And it's all going to fall into place. Everything that was said, it's all going to fall into place. Because that's just as humans, that's how we are. You know, it, it takes us a minute to crack down, but we do. And eventually, like I said in the beginning, what happens in the dark shall come to light.